Good morning. Uh, we are together in another international webinar of Ankara University. Uh, today, Italy's Ankara Ambassador, Mr. Massimo Gagliani, will be our guest. Thank you, uh, Ambassador, for accepting our uh, invitation with your great kindness. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, Professor Suzanne. Good morning, Professors Okaza. And uh, it's a real pleasure for me to uh, be with you and to be able to speak uh, to your students. Thank you. Um, before we will talk about the international relations in the new period uh, of the world, uh, Professor Nevin Özkan, uh, the head of the Italian Language and Literature Department, uh, would like to read your uh, CV for our audience. Good morning, Mr. Ambassador. Welcome again. And thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, Massimo Gaiani is the ambassador of Italy to the Republic of Turkey since the 8th of January and has presented his credential letters to His Excellency President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on the 7th February 2019. He previously served as the Director General for Global Issues and for Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, at the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, and as ambassador of Italy to Albania. He joined the Italian diplomatic service in 1982. Since then, he has served in various capacities at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Rome, in the Prime Minister office, and at diplomatic missions in Montreal, Washington, and Brussels. The ambassador has an extensive experience in European Union affairs. He has been the diplomatic advisor to the Minister for European Affairs, the Director General of the EU Policies Department at the Prime Minister's Office, Head of the Secretariat of the Interministerial Committee for European Affairs, and earlier in his career, he has been Head of the EU Neighborhood and Enlargement Office. Previously, he served as Councillor in the Italian Embassy in Washington, covering strategic issues, NATO and military cooperation. In his capacity of Director General for Global Affairs, Massimo Gaiani was responsible for all issues related to global governance and for bilateral relations with the countries of Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Latin America. Among the, many, among the main duties of the Directorate were the issues followed by the international institutions for economic and multilateral financial cooperation, economic and multilateral financial subjects pertinent to the G7, G8, G20 processes, and the sectors of energy and the environment. Massimo Gaiani also sat in the Council of the International Renewable Energies Agency and was a governor of the International Energy Agency. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ambassador, I would like to congratulate the Italian Republic Day also. Uh, the celebration was on June the 2nd, I suppose. Uh, so uh, what, what can you tell us about the new era of the international relations? Uh, we would like to hear from you, please. Well, I, I think that uh, in a certain sense, these three months uh, changed uh, the world. We were used to be constantly on the move. Uh, for instance, uh, I was spend, uh, spending uh, one third of my time in Ankara, one third of my time in Istanbul, and one third of my time uh, around uh, a big country like, like Turkey. And since three months, I'm here in, uh, in Ankara. <laughs> I'm uh, enjoying uh, my, my residence uh, and the huge park that, uh, that we have. And I had uh, a lot of time to think, to read, uh, to hear music. Uh, certainly, we looked into ourselves more deeply. Uh, we stopped uh, moving constantly. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, with, with, uh, with the, the fact that uh, many people uh, started to work from their home, uh, there was a, a, a real revolution, probably the most important uh, uh, sudden revolution since the Industrial Revolution. Uh, and I think that this uh, will have uh, uh, permanent consequences also on the sp spatial dimension. For instance, uh, for three months, uh, people in Italy were not allowed to move 
from one city to the other. And, and this is, is huge, it, it, never, it never happened. Uh, we reopened the internal borders only uh, uh, yesterday, uh, after, after three, three months. Uh, and, and probably we will not have uh, the concept of big cities in the same, uh, in the same way. Uh, why should I uh, spend uh, a lot of money to have uh, a high rent uh, in a big city if I can go to the office once or twice a week? Uh, perhaps wh why not uh, living in a small town at a reasonable distance uh, with lower costs and uh, a better quality of life? And I think that these uh, changes uh, will be uh, absolutely uh, permanent in our life. Even just imagine that even only 10% of the people, th this affects, of course, more the white collars than the blue collars and the other workers. But for white collars, uh, if 10% of the people living in, in big cities move, it will be uh, enormous, uh, even social uh, changes. Uh, on, on the uh, international life also, uh, we, we had seen uh, big changes. Uh, of course, you are certainly aware that uh, in the international dimensions, uh, uh, and especially the, the work of a diplomat abroad, is made essentially of personal contacts, of understanding the country uh, where you are living. I, I attach a great importance uh, to uh, travel in Turkey, because you cannot know Turkey if you don't see not only the capital, not only Istanbul, but you also have to see the rest of the country. In this sense, we have certainly limitations in, uh, in, in, our, in, our, in our job, in our duties. And, and we had to reconvert uh, from one day to the other, uh, all the people in the office and all people, all people in uh, at home, and, and so we have to reinvent. As uh, as done, uh, I, I presume uh, universities, because you uh, moved for from physical presence to uh, education uh, given uh, on on air uh, in, in in a virtual way, and I think that uh, one the uh, of of the iconic. Uh, uh, images will be of students uh, that were uh, graduating with graduating uh, ceremonies of the discussion of the thesis from their house, from their kitchen, uh, from wherever they were living. And this will stay for forever and it will be really, really touching. And, and in, in, in a certain sense, uh, it has impacted uh, also in uh, a certain sense of uh, democracy because at, at the, say, uh, the certain moment, living in Istanbul with all its offer uh, of uh, cultural events, uh, of uh, uh, all kinds of events, or living in a small village was exactly the same. You had, if you had a good connection and access uh, to internet, you were on a foot of parity. Uh, and, and this is also a big, a big change. But uh, it also um, impel us to invest a lot on digitalization, on infrastructures that will allow everyone to be connected from everywhere in a certain country. So we have some maybe good things as well. We actually uh, concluded some good, we realized some good things as well uh, out of these pandemics maybe. Uh, yes, I certainly, certainly. We, we had to, to give up, for instance, in, in personal contacts, but uh, uh, at the same time, you can could reach a wider a group of people and not only those who were located near to your offices or where you were having events. And we have experimented that uh, for, with, with the, the Italian department. Uh, we organized some, uh, some lessons on Dante and we had a, a very large participation. And I'm sure that uh, it was a larger participation that if we had uh, 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 this kind of the, uh, discussion of, of lesson in a room because the, the room was the whole the whole country all of a sudden. 
And, and so <laughs> there are also opportunities, big opportunities, but we will have to work hard to, to uh, enjoy all these opportunities. And on, on the international side, uh, of course, uh, there were um, instantly no more uh, travel abroad by, by minister, by members uh, of government, but we had many more uh, uh, video conferences, uh, phone call, uh, and so in a certain sense, uh, the diplomacy moved from uh, the personal contact uh, to another kind uh, of interaction. I think that in the future, we'll, we will have to have a balance. Uh, we will need some personal contacts because there is a call also a kind of chemistry uh, among uh, human beings that is extremely important and BTC cannot substitute entirely. But I think that the two elements can mix uh, and, uh, and at the end probably the result will be uh, a better one and uh, uh, more effective. If you know a person well, you can contact her very easily throughout uh, a VTC and sometimes you spare the travel, uh, which in certain cases it's very long and very tiring. And, and with, uh, with one travel, you can make uh, 10 uh, VTC and be connected and having the possibility to speak uh, uh, to everyone. And we are seeing that uh, certain meetings uh, uh, in which only uh, a certain part of the person that were invited could participate, when you have a VTC, everyone is on board, uh, everyone is, is participating, and I think that sometimes the result is even better. Thank you. Maybe we'll talk about our Italian department uh, yes. while we are here, the head of the department. Uh, please, Professor Esca. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Suzanne. So, um, uh, Mr. Ambassador, you mentioned uh, your support uh, for the cultural events. Uh, we are very thankful to you uh, because as uh, the Department of Italian Language and Literature, now also our students and our students-to-be are listening to us, our future students future are listening students. to us. So we want to give some information about our uh, department, which is uh, the oldest in the country. It was formed in 1960, and it has language and literature courses. The diploma uh, is given in five years, and uh, we have a one-to-one -one contact with our students, which is very important. As you have mentioned, social contacts social contact. are exactly very important, especially in humanities, but also in other uh, fields uh, at university level and also afterwards uh, in business life. And uh, I have to say that from the moment the uh, pandemic started, uh, I have to be thankful to you because from one side, our administration, uh, our rector, our vice rector, from the other side, yourself, His Excellency, contacted us in order to create these webinars uh, directed to our students, our ex-students, our colleagues, in and outside Turkey, and we worked together. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. I want to thank you, your embassy, my administration, my rector and my vice rector, because this was really a big chance for us uh, to, uh, to do what we really want to do, to bring together all our forces and to collaborate with our uh, colleagues in and outside Turkey and many of our uh, colleagues from Italy, from different universities like La Sapienza, Roma 3, uh, Università uh, per Stranieri di Siena, Tor Università di Molise, Tor Vergata, they all were very happy to collaborate. And uh, so these web webinars uh, will continue thanks to you uh, and thanks to our uh, university with the help of Casa Italia, of course, which I really want to mention as well. So I think uh, you had a, a very good uh, insight, uh, feeling uh, in uh, wanting uh, to create these webinars, just like our administration. And I want to be uh, thankful uh, to, to, say, to tell my thanks, to say my thanks to both. Thank you. Yeah, would you like to say something for the new students who would like to uh, choose the Italian language? Yes, with, uh, with great pleasure. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, we have the chance of having a wonderful 
um, Department of Italian Studies, uh, where very good students came out. And I find themselves uh, in, in the various uh, uh, part of the Turkish society. And I must say they demonstrate to have acquired a very solid education that allow them to, uh, allow them to be successful uh, in all kind uh, of uh, uh, jobs uh, and, uh, and to, to face uh, uh, all the challenges of life uh, very well uh, equipped. And uh, I can say you that we will continue uh, to support with all our strengths uh, the Italian department. Uh, I do think that uh, language is one of the most important expression and we have uh, to invest in the, in the, the fact that uh, our language continue to be studied. I must say that uh, we are uh, quite uh, uh, satisfied with the results. Just think that Italian is not very well known, is, is the fourth uh, language studied in the world. Of course, not, not taught, not, uh, but studied. So many people are studying Italian all over the world. And, and uh, uh, Italian is uh, an instrument, an important instrument, of course, to understand uh, the whole of the humanity uh, uh, branches and, and, and uh, this kind uh, of, of uh, uh, sector of, of, of studies, but it's also very important for music, uh, for, for arts, uh, and it has also a certain importance uh, uh, in the economic sector, especially in, uh, in Turkey, uh, where Italy is the fifth partner uh, mm -hmm. in, in the world. And, and we have a very, very strong uh, um, economic uh, and trade uh, links uh, uh, between Italy and, uh, and Turkey. So I think that it's a good, it's, it's a useful uh, tool to know, to know Italian in Turkey. Uh, and uh, we will continue to invest uh, uh, on the uh, Italian studies uh, department. And in a certain sense, the paradox uh, of uh, this crisis is that we will have uh, a, a bigger offer uh, to give because it's much easier to have someone to participate uh, in a webinar. And at the end, the result for the students is the same, that having uh, them uh, in... Uh, uh, in person, but with the same uh, um, resources that we have, we can have uh, 10, 10 persons instead of, of, only, of only one participating and, and given, giving their experience to the, to the students. And we will continue in, in, this, uh, in this sense, we will continue to invest uh, a lot and I'm sure that all together we will prepare uh, and organize very good uh, um, events and, and opportunities uh, to have uh, for, 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 for students uh, a wider look in the world. So we can say uh, for the future students, there will be more opportunities uh, waiting for them, uh, for the Italian studies students, hopefully. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, I would like to ask the uh, situation about the universities in Italy now. Uh, I think uh, the education suspended like the other countries and uh, most of them maybe started the online education. Uh, what are the decisions for the f future uh, studies? Uh, well, I think that uh, like it happened in Turkey, all of a sudden uh, Italian university uh, had to reconvert uh, from uh, uh, lessons and examinations uh, given in, in person with the physical presence, they had to reconvert. Uh, it was a, a very hard job, but I think that uh, uh, the results were uh, quite uh, successful. Uh, and I must say that uh, uh, even the professor were uh, quite happy with the results and they, they had to acknowledge that in many situations students were more attentive, more receptive uh, than when they were in, in, in person. Uh, I don't know, perhaps uh, it's due to the fact that uh, young people are so much at ease with the uh, digital instrument. Uh, 
and uh, even uh, students that uh, in uh, in class were not uh, uh, participating a lot from their house in a different <laughs> context they give uh, more results uh, and more attention and they they learn more in in that in that way so the results were quite good uh, for the future um, some universities uh, have already stated uh, that uh, they will continue uh, to use uh, the two channels so so some some uh, lessons uh, some exams uh, in person but a part uh, uh, of the teaching that will continue to be uh, given throughout the digital uh, the digital system so i think that for a while and perhaps forever we will see the combination of the two uh, systems and this will be very uh, useful for those especially for those uh, people that were coming from far away uh, they, they will have more facilities uh, to choose uh, the the university that they, they like they like more and, and and the universities will have a wider uh, possibility uh, to enroll students uh, also coming from uh, from far away and at the same time uh, the, each university will have the possibility to offer uh, lessons and teaching by by a wider range uh, of uh, of professors that uh, you can, you can do uh, teaching in, in, in one in one time kind in one country or in one uh, town and and uh, living in another one uh, and and this so will uh, make uh, uh, opportunities ev even bigger for everyone this online education will be the other opportunity maybe uh, this pandemic gave us uh, so if we can actually uh, do as you said uh, the person to person courses and online courses all together so it will be uh, much more effective maybe more the students uh, also i see on the um, italian televisions for the primary school education is online i suppose and the, the uh, high schools are online as well uh, if i understand from rai yeah. with my italian <laughs> Yes, I, I, I must say that we came back to a moment uh, in which uh, uh, the TV uh, played a very important mm -hmm. uh, role in education. Uh, probably uh, not many people know that uh, until uh, uh, the 60s, so uh, only uh, 60 years ago, Italians, many Italians uh, uh, do not know Italian. They know, they knew the, the language of that uh, region. And it was only throughout the television that uh, all Italians uh, learned Italian, uh, <laughs> combined with their local uh, language. And, and this was mainly, uh, th there were three factors, the movement uh, of workers from the south to the north and uh, the, the, Italian, uh, the Italian television that uh, was a wonderful instrument and it has restarted to uh, have this kind of uh, function uh, greatly because uh, all of a sudden there was no, no school anymore, no university and, and the, the TV could reach really everyone because every household will have uh, a TV set while not all households have uh, uh, digital connections. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, Professor Oskan's questions? Uh, yes. Well, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, as you have mentioned, uh, in this era with the webinars, uh, we can reach more uh, scholars, more students, and this is the pros, let's say, the positive uh, aspects of this uh, pandemic. Uh, and uh, with your help and support, we would like to collaborate with uh, more universities in Italy uh, because, uh, as you say, the costs will be low, uh, the, the chances of them of uh, uh, attending a conference, a video conference or giving a lesson uh, via Zoom. Uh, will be uh, much uh, more and uh, this would uh, maybe enable uh, 
the possibility to share knowledge, share experience between our universities. Uh, we you now have many uh, agreements with uh, numerous universities in Italy uh, in many fields, but we hope to uh, have a higher number, uh, as you have mentioned, with uh, this uh, kind of opportunity given to us, a uh, kind of blended education where uh, foreign uh, professors, our colleagues from abroad, from Italy, can participate with a video conference uh, and share their knowledge. What do you think about it, His Excellency? No, I, I think that uh, this will be a great opportunity. Of course, people will tend uh, to travel less. So, uh, yeah. We will lose certainly a lot uh, uh, because I, I don't think that uh, all of a sudden all the Erasmus and Erasmus Plus uh, uh, students will restart uh, uh, with, with the same uh, numbers that we had before. Uh, and this will be certainly a loss, uh, but uh, a minus. Uh, but uh, we can compensate uh, uh, by uh, a more intensive cooperation uh, internationally uh, by, by universities and by uh, exchanging experiences and, and, law, and, and, law and knowledge. And it will be much easier for a professor to give lessons uh, without moving from his uh, uh, hometown or country. Uh, and, and, and there will be a, a, a bigger links uh, among universities. And I, I believe that universities is one of the areas where this kind of evolution will be the, the stronger. Thank you. So while we are talking about Erasmus, it is uh, the very important issue for uh, Turkey as well, like the other European countries. Uh, we are one of the, the uh, member of UNICA. UNICA, maybe I have to mention, uh, it's an association of the universities from capital cities of uh, Europe. So it's quite a prestigious um, association. And Ankara University and also METU from Ankara, uh, two universities, we are representing Turkey uh, in this uh, association. And I'm one of the steering committee member of the uh, Association. Also, uh, the president is Professor Luciano Sasso, is from uh, La Sapienza University. So we have very close relationship, and we try to increase uh, our university relationship with the other universities, especially from the capital cities of Europe. Uh, usually, the most um, oldest and uh, experienced universities are located in the most of the time in the uh, capital cities. So uh, what we do is try to now uh, find good ways uh, from this pandemic to our university and the other universities. And of course, one of the questions is Erasmus, what is going to happen to Erasmus, which is very, very important uh, because the Ankara University is the most successful uh, university in Turkey regarding to sending uh, students especially to Europe. So it affects us uh, deeply. And on the other hand, uh, last couple of years in the Erasmus meetings, what we see is the virtual Erasmus is on the way. So the virtual Erasmus, um, not entirely actually, we liked the idea of sitting in your country and taking the uh, lessons from the other country, but now maybe in this upcoming term, in uh, fall term, many university will uh, do that. Because what we saw actually, we had uh, during this pandemic, we have many students uh, actually uh, stayed in Italy. They didn't want to come back. They wanted to carry on their education online. So uh, in a similar way, uh, some students stayed in Turkey and they followed our online courses. So it is completely new era. It's very unexpected, but I think all the countries in Europe, especially as far as I can see, managed very well. So um, probably Erasmus is going to be uh, partially virtual, <laughs> yeah. partially uh, the uh, classical Erasmus way. Uh, so what do you think about this? Um, 
Do you have any um, suggestions uh, about these Erasmus conditions? Well, first of all, we were very touched by the fact that many students, both, uh, let us say, Europeans or Turkish in Europe, uh, stayed uh, uh, even when the, the crisis uh, was very intense and high. And we sure. had uh, repatriation very late on both sides. Uh, I, I, I was all, all the time in contact with uh, my colleague, my Turkish colleague in Rome, uh, and we organized flights. Uh, uh, ah. bring, uh, on one side, Italian students uh, that were uh, studying in Turkey back to, to, to Italy and with the same, the same plane uh, bringing back uh, um, um, the Turkish students that stayed uh, in, uh, for, for a long time, in, even during the crisis in, uh, in Italy. And I think that we own them something. They, they really were kind of heroes in, in, in this whole, uh, whole affair. And uh, I am dreaming of, of organizing something for all of them, bringing mm -hmm. together uh, um, Italian Erasmus students in Turkey and uh, uh, Turkish students, Erasmus students in Italy. If we can uh, connect them throughout uh, a kind of a common platform, uh, I think that they could exchange experiences, uh, know each other, even uh, only virtually and, and and i'm really fond if we can uh, uh, go through this kind of, of projects i think that we owe uh, this to these young people that uh, were very brave very attached uh, to their role of students uh, in a foreign countries uh, they overcome uh, very difficult situations with the families that were extremely worried on the other side but then really said, I'm here, I'm happy of what I'm doing, and I want to continue to that. I think that together with the doctors, to the uh, nurses uh, that, that were heroes of that time, we, can, we must also remember Erasmus students uh, that uh, demonstrated a great attachment to their role, to their mission, uh, and, and we have to do something from them. And, and I think that in the future, as it will happen for the normal education uh, by universities, we can uh, dream of having a, a mix, a combination of uh, e-learning, uh, so with uh, uh, e-Erasmus, uh, but we need to have also a physical presence because uh, only virtual, you, you lose part uh, of the value of Erasmus in which you have, as a diplomat, if you don't travel in the country, if you don't live in the country, you lose the, 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 the most important parts of your, of your mission. You do not understand the people. Uh, it's not only government, it's only people that you have to, uh, to understand. And, and sometimes give going, I don't know, to a, 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 a soccer... Uh, uh, <laughs> Game, game, yeah. game uh, is as important to understand the people that uh, uh, in having relations with uh, with member of the administration, as I think that in the, in, in the same way, uh, students need to uh, to experiment and uh, uh, to feel a certain country. It's part uh, of the enrichment of their experience. I think that we can work uh, uh, of a combination of the two things. And this will also reduce costs because at the end, uh, if you stay a shorter period, uh, you can have more people uh, uh, enrolling to these kind of experiences. And I think that at the end, uh, we will gain uh, of, of the whole issue. Actually, I admire for the young generation in this era. They were so brave. We yeah. have a lot of things, and especially Erasmus students, last health workers, like health workers, they are actually heroes. Uh, they stayed there, and they were so determined. They now carry on their education in another country under the circumstances they didn't uh, care. And uh, actually, we, we actually uh, department they continue their education as well. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, you have a question. 
And uh, if I may ask you, uh, uh, we have a question to you, and the question goes, uh, what does uh, His Excellency think about digital collaboration on culture, such as libraries, galleries, museums, and archives between Italy and Turkey? I, I think that also can be a, a positive development of this uh, crisis. Uh, many museums, uh, uh, archives uh, have been closed for uh, uh, several months, but uh, uh, they uh, converted uh, uh, into a digital uh, offer. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and in this way, uh, there was a wider access uh, to that, what they could, uh, they could offer. And, and I think that we need to uh, amplify, to uh, increase this kind of uh, collaboration. That is certainly a win-win uh, mm -hmm. situation in which uh, we can share more among countries internationally uh, by exchanging data um, uh, digitally uh, and, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the possibilities are really enormous and we can all benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So do we have other uh, questions uh, before we conclude our talk? I, no, I don't have any more. It's fine with and me. I, I have one and um, they they want to know what would be the biggest challenge from now on uh, in the international relations. Well, I think that uh, the biggest challenge is uh, on the economic side, mm. uh, because we, we, we spoke uh, about uh, the many opportunities that uh, were given by, by the pandemic, but uh, we have to be uh, uh, honest and, and also see the enormous economic pri uh, price that uh, we have uh, paid already and we risk uh, to continue to pay. Uh, because uh, certainly the, 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 the confidence of uh, people um, got uh, uh, a, a, big, a big change and, and so if you take uh, people as consumer, they, they changed their habits. They were less inclined in, in buying anything, any kind of things. Uh, and uh, on the top of that, uh, uh, countries like, like uh, Turkey and Italy, where tourism was a very important share of the economy, I think that we are more or less in the same situation in Italy tourism accounts for 13% of the GDP. But we have also to understand that uh, tourism brings uh, a lot of opportunity uh, for the, uh, all the commercial sector. So you, uh, you can sell, you can show uh, products that then uh, the people that are uh, moving for tourist, touristic uh, reasons uh, uh, will continue to buy from their home. So uh, the, there has been a, a, a very huge reduction of economic activities. And uh, we risk to, to lose uh, many companies. Uh, for instance, in Italy, uh, there is a huge number of very small companies, and not only in service sectors, but also in the production that risk uh, uh, to be uh, to not be able to overcome this this crisis not to have the means uh, to reopen to reopen many restaurants some hotels and some other uh, activities and i think that this is the big challenge uh, an injection uh, of uh, of hope of confidence uh, uh, all over the world, uh, uh, restarting uh, a kind of uh, business uh, and, and, and the trade and, 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 and part of the consumption, uh, because otherwise the whole system will, uh, will collapse. At the same time, probably a globalization will not be the same. And uh, we have seen uh, that the value chain uh, uh, was uh, um, too unbalanced and we understand all of a sudden 
that uh, certain components that were essentially to our life and to our production were all concentrated in certain part of the world. And when uh, they stopped arriving from there, we were in enormous trouble. So I think that uh, uh, the productivity chain will have to change. And, and certainly Turkey is very well placed to play a role in this uh, evolution, uh, working probably uh, closely with Europe because uh, from the economic point of view, Turkey is very much connected uh, to, to Europe, uh, which represents 50% uh, of the market uh, of uh, uh, Turkish goods uh, uh, worldwide, uh, and 66% of the investments, foreign investments in Turkey comes from Europe. So I think that uh, if we manage to uh, consolidate uh, these links, both uh, Europe and Turkey with benefit, uh, uh, and we will see a, a greater role uh, uh, of Turkey uh, in being part of this uh, global chain uh, of production. Uh, in, in Turkey, uh, there is a very high quality of production, very um, skilled uh, uh, labor force, uh, and Turkey is also uh, geographically so well placed uh, in the middle uh, between uh, Europe and, and, and Asia, which is the, the biggest uh, flow of, uh, of goods uh, in the world. Uh, and I think that uh, if we are able uh, to uh, face this huge challenge and be um, effective, uh, be uh, the operative way, uh, I think that uh, uh, we will overcome the crisis uh, uh, and uh, we will find uh, ourselves uh, uh, better placed uh, than, than before. But we will have to work very, very hard. Economy is, will be the biggest challenge, as I understand. We manage the education somehow. Yes. Uh, it, it's going well, but I hope everything is going to be okay and we will be uh, like we used to be very soon, I hope. And Mr. Ambassador, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. And you always supported our university. Uh, I would like to thank you very, very much uh, for accepting our invitation and sharing your valuable time with us. And uh, I would like to uh, give the word uh, Professor Özkan before we conclude. Yes, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for, these, uh, for this enlightening speech. And I'm sure the students who are watching us uh, have now a very clear idea of our department, of, of our faculty of humanities, of our university, and of your big support to us, even in these very uh, uh, difficult days. We always have felt you, uh, your presence near us, and we are very thankful for it. And we hope that with your uh, wonderful network, I imagine you have a very good uh, network of, uh, of Italians in Turkey, Turkish people in, Ita in Italy, and the people interested in uh, various fields, but working or, uh, well, prepared to work together. We will uh, bring together our forces also in the future as uh, University of Ankara and as uh, Embassy of Italy, and we will uh, do many projects together for uh, the benefit of our colleagues and students. Thank you very much. You, you can support, you rely on my support, and, and thank, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity of addressing your students. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Goodbye. Goodbye.